Hello, we are going to take a very broad overview, a big picture view of the lymphoid immune system. So let's start off by looking at what are the main components. So of course we will have the B cells or B lymphocytes. These are responsible for producing antibodies as part of the humoral immune response. And then we have the T cells or T lymphocytes. Now there are several types of T cells. Uh, one type, the cytotoxic T cells, they actually can kill other cells. And we also have the helper T cells which help to modulate the immune response by producing the cytokines. In addition, there is another cell type known as the NK cell or natural killer cells. These are responsible for killing other cells uh, and thereby um, getting rid of the agents that cause injury. So B cells come from the bone marrow and it's easy to remember because bone starts with B. T cells, they come from the thymus. Again, easy to remember because of the T. And this is an organ that's located in the anterior mediastinum. And NK cells can come from a variety of sources, including lymph nodes, the spleen, as well as mucosa-associated lymphoid tissue. This is actually a section of the appendix, and you can see some reactive lymphoid follicles here. Collectively, these form the secondary lymphoid organs. A proportion of NK cells also originates from the bone marrow, similar to B cells. Now, what is the function of the lymphoid immune system? Well, uh, if you recall a little bit of your physiology, the B and the T cells are part of the adaptive immune response. And just to recap, uh, this is a specific immune response to specific pathogens or antigens. There is memory and there is usually a little bit of a time lag, so it's not an immediate response. Uh, in contrast, the NK cells are part of the innate immune response, and this is not specific. It is the body's first line of defense, so it is pretty immediate, and there is no capacity for memory. Moving on to the pathology of uh, these uh, tissues, well, we can look at pathology in terms of specific components, and this is how it is uh, organized nicely in your lecture notes. Lymph nodes, for example, it can be benign conditions like reactive lymphoid hyperplasia or malignant conditions such as secondary malignancies or primary malignancies known as lymphoma. Uh, there can be disorders of the MALT, which stands for mucosa-associated lymphoid tissue, as you can see here in the appendix. And these can be hyperplastic, again, reactive, or they can be neoplastic or lymphomatous. Then there are disorders in the bone marrow, which can include uh, di different types of hypoplasias of the components of the bone marrow, or again malignancies, and the chief malignancy in the bone marrow would be known as leukemia. In the spleen, there can be a variety of conditions, including infections, storage conditions, and also spleen can be involved by hematolymphoid malignancies, including lymphomas as well as leukemias. And in the thymus, again, there is a spectrum of disorders, including developmental disorders. Um, there are conditions such as the George syndrome, there's myasthenia gravis, and again, there are neoplasms in the thymus, which include germ cell tumors, lymphomas, as well as thymomas. Now, in addition to having abnormalities in specific uh, lymphoid tissue types, there can also be some sort of functional abnormalities, and these are grouped into immunological disorders. So what can go wrong with the function? First of all, there can be excessive immune response, and you can see this in examples such as allergies and hypersensitivity reactions. There can be inadequate response, and this can be either primary, for example, skid, severe combined immunodeficiency, or acquired immunodeficiency, which can be due to drugs such as steroids, chemotherapy, or even, uh, very importantly, viral agents such as human immunodeficiency virus. And in addition, sometimes there can be an inappropriate immune response, and this is seen um, in a spectrum of autoimmune disorders such as SLE or rheumatoid arthritis. So this is a very big picture view, uh, overview of the lymphoid immune system. And uh, if you remember it in terms of the components, the types of lymphoid tissue, the primary lymphoid tissues and the secondary lymphoid tissues, the main functions and the main pathologies in the different compartments, uh, this will help you to understand this topic better.